Lord's put on my heart at the beginning of the year in January some things. And, and the, the funny thing about it is he put on my heart in January that 2020 was not going to be normal, that it was going to be totally different. Well, I have to agree with that. It's been nothing but what we think is normal. And, and God said this is a time for us to realize that we need to put our trust and hope in him. And, and the question he wants to ask you today is, so many times we think, who are you? You know, I've asked God that for many, many years. Who are you? And, you know, I ask a few people, and like my son, he said, you know who I am, Mom. Who are you? <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, uh, what your, it can be anything from what your name is, the story of your life from maybe a certain kind of family. You come from a certain place, and it could be another country. Uh, you come, you may be called a husband or a wife. Uh, your mom or dad or a son or a daughter. A job where in the title it carries may make you think that's who you are, and, but you're really not. And maybe even a certain church you go to dictates to you who, who and what they think you should be, and that's not true either. Uh, sometimes your life is neatly defined into a catch-all, generic, very comfortable. You do the same thing every day, and it's like, okay, I can do this. It's comfortable. And God said, People just don't like change. But God said, doesn't see you. He doesn't see you the way that you see yourself. The Word says you are. You are somebody and you're His child. In Jeremiah uh, 29, 11, if you can put it up on the board for me. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good, not evil, to give you a future and a hope. And also, I want to read this out of the Message Bible, because it says it just a little bit different. Um, and I kind of like the way it is, what the version of this was. It says, I know what I'm doing. And this, this is the Lord. This is really good news. I know what I'm doing. I have it all planned, what I'm doing. I have it all planned out, plans to take care of you. Hallelujah. Not abandon you plans to give you the future you hope for. Now, that's good news, people. We do have a future. We don't have to look at what's going on out here in the world. When you call on me, when you come and pray to me, I'll listen. He does hear us when we cry out to him. When you come looking for me, you'll find me. Yes, when you get serious about finding me, and what, what more than anything else, I'll make sure you won't be disappointed. Hallelujah, that is such good news. When I looked up the difference in these, and I thought, well, they're both good, but this one was a little more simplified. And, uh, and then I want to turn to Jeremiah 1.5. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Now, see, we think sometimes that we're already something because of the way we've grown up. Our childhood has nothing to do with what we are as an adult because change, you can always change. I've had to change things in my life uh, tremendously. And God says the problem with the world today is we're comparing ourselves to everyone. We, and God, he said, stop doing that. Stop comparing yourself to what other people think uh, uh, of you. Uh, that may, who, you think that affects who you are, and it's not. Fear and rejection are definitely not of God. And we're living in a society today that all we do is compare, 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 and God said, stop it. He says, this is not a time. People say, well, uh, they've got you con convinced that you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, you're not pretty enough, and it goes on and on and on. You're not rich enough. And, and the, the problem with that is that when I did that, I did that for years. I compared myself to other people, and, and it, it ended up catching up with me. I used to think because of the family I came from, I came from an alcoholic family that uh, he drank all the time, run around on my mom, and he actually beat my mom, and he beat my brother. Uh, and so I grew up believing that this was the way that life was. This is the way, and this is the only thing that I could expect in life was because I, that's the way I grew up. That's what I saw. So I never expected any more out of me. I had cousins I grew up with that were really pretty and really smart and went to college, and I did not. And so I always compared myself to them. But the one thing about my cousins is that I always wanted to do better. They were like... Uh, an influence in my life, and I'm very thankful for that. But I got to the point when I grew up, and, and my ex-husband, I grew up in a situation where, because I felt that way, 
uh, he run around too, and so I thought that's all I expected out of life. And because of that, I plummeted. <laughs> I got in a comfort zone where some people will do uh, drugs, alcohol, and other stuff to come from. I eat. I eat, and I loved it. I'd even hide food. And so I ended up plummeting to 250 pounds. Then I really didn't like myself. Then I got to the point that uh, I just wanted to die. I just felt totally worthless. And, and so finally, it was so bad that my blood pressure got so bad that they told me I either lose weight or I die. It was as simple as that. And so I tried. I mean, I tried in the natural to lose weight and I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I'd do it and then I'd gain some. I'd gain twice as much back. But the point of it is God graciously took care of that and now I don't put my trust and my hope and my faith in what, who I am, what you think of me, or who I'm supposed to be. I'm his daughter. I'm his daughter. And he loves me just the way I am. He loves you just the way you are. And people out here that's listening to this, don't listen to what they're saying about you because it's not true. His love is unconditional. Sometimes we feel in things that we have a problem with, with shame, bitterness, self-pity, guilt, anger, jealousy, or even isolation from other people. People, that's not from God. That is the enemy trying to hold you back and keep you from going forth and being the man and woman of God that he's called you to be. But there is good news in 2 Timothy 1.7. For God had not given us the spirit of fear, amen, but a power of love and of sound mind. That's awesome. It, it, the problem we have is what's between here. It, it, it's the problem here. It's not, it's not him doing it, and, and we're not going to get this right in here between our ears until we get our heart right. We, what we put in our heart is what we put out. And if you're putting in negativity stuff and you're putting in that you don't like yourself and all these other things I named, if you can't get over and get out of that, then that's what's in here. And the devil doesn't want you to go any further than what you are. Um, Jesus loves you just the way you are. He cares about all things in your life. And nothing, and when and we say nothing, can separate us. When I talk about he cares about all things, he says that's in capital letters. That's in capital letters. I love, I love you and I care about everything, all things in your life. The joy of the Lord is, is your strength. We are more than conquerors. Hallelujah, people. That's good news. Uh, your testimony, this is really good. This is something God put on my heart. Your testimony is not how bad you were or how bad you are now how many mistakes you have even made. Your testimony is how good our God is. Amen? He loves you. And I, can I have 1 John 4, 9, and 10? God showed us how much He loved us by, by sending His one and only Son into the world so that we might have eternal life through Him. Now, that's, that is great, people. I mean, that is just awesome. Uh, I read that and I think, wow, He loves us so much. If, if you get into the Word, this, this book right here, I'm going to tell you, is alive. It's the real deal. It's, there's nothing out else out there to compare to this. This book is a real and this book is alive. It's got all, anything that you could possibly want in it. Uh, freedom. God says we have freedom to pick and choose. He gave us the freedom to pick and choose what we, cho we, what we want. He says no looking back because your back is your past. Your past is gone. Your past is gone. We only have one day Today is the day that we, we are who we are, and we, can't, we can do what we can do on today. But we can't decide what we're going to do tomorrow because tomorrow's not here. He tells us not to take and, and, and override that and try to figure out what he wants to do before he even does it. Does it, does it, excuse me. Well, I made you laugh, didn't I? <laughs> um, but today is the day. God says, will you surrender? Will you follow? Will you trust him? His love is free and unconditional. 
Michael, I need, I need Michael to bring, he's my poster boy tonight. Yay. That's exactly, can I turn it around a little bit so I can see it too, Michael? God's kingdom's plan never ends. And that's never means never. It's unconditional love. So stop condemning yourself and remembering things that you've done because he's already died on the cross and forgiven you for it. Uh, his security is 24-7. Yeah. I mean, that's awesome. 24-7. I mean, we never have to worry or fret about anything, but we do, we do, okay. We have the free will to choose whether we want to hang on to things or, or to, to let them go. Um, you can know who you are. This is Pastor Miriam gave me this. I hadn't planned on doing this, but Pastor, Pastor Miriam helped me with this. You know, in the beginning I said, who are you? And a lot of us wonder that because of the situations going on. First of all, I want to tell you that God loves all of you. He doesn't care if you're pink, blue, green, whatever. He doesn't see color. He sees his children. He, he sees his people the way that he created them. And we're all the same. We're the ones who choose to look at different colors. And God said, that's not me. And he said, I love all of you. And, and now we can say and know who you are now. If you know Jesus Christ, you know who you are in him. And in Ephesians 2, 9, and 10, please. Thank you. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. So none of us can boast about it. For we are God's masterpiece. Yes, yes, yes. It doesn't matter what people think I am. It doesn't matter what they see me as. I love Jesus, and that's what I want them to see. I want them to see who lives inside of me, who, who lives in my heart, and who is pushing me to go higher and, and be in Him. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus. So we can do the good things He planned for us long ago. He did this. He planned these things all long, long ago. God didn't promise Days without pain, laughter without sorrow, nor rain without, nor sun without rain. But he did promise strength for the day, comfort for the tears, and light for the way. And the light is the Son of God. That's who our light is. Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and he is your light, and he's the only way. Um, amen. And, and, and I just, I just want to say that there's somebody out here listening this tonight, and God's put this on my heart for over a week now. And he said there's, there's somebody out here that's going through a really hard time right now that's listening, and you're not sure why you're listening to me, but God said to tell you, don't do it. Don't do it. Your life matters. You are somebody to him. And he said, He's been taking care of you and watching you. And he, and he said to tell you, his arms are reaching out. All you have to do is make a commitment to him. Reach out and ask for him. He's there. He never leaves us. And, and I'd also like to say that for some of us, we may have to make a decision, make a new decision in our life. We may want to, like, recommit ourselves. I'm sure nobody here does. But, but out here in the highways and byways, out here with people listening, there's... There, you need to know how much Jesus Christ loves you, and he cares about everything in your life. So don't let what you're seeing today in the news and the, in the social media convince you that you're worthless, because God said you are worth something. You are worth his love and his affection, and it's, it's the real deal. God said, I'm the real deal. I'm not fake. I'm not phony. I'm not like uh, what you're seeing out here. He said, I'm the real deal. He said, come, get into this word. When you get into this word, you're going to get filled up. You're going to get filled up to the point that it's like, wow, I didn't know that, but I do today. And that's because he cares. He cares. So I'd like to say that if there's anybody out there that would like to give their life to the Lord today, this is a good time. This is a good season to do it. And come in and just ask him. Just ask him what he can do. God says, we have not because we ask not. And God said, just ask me. Just ask me. And so I'd like for us all to, to bow our heads. I'm going to pray about this. If there's somebody out there, please listen to this and, get, and rededicate your life. Some of you may re, just need to rededicate. And some of you just need to really, for the first time, give your life to the Lord. Father God, I just thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. 
in here and what you're doing outside of here. Father God, I just thank you and, and just repeat this. Father God, I just thank you. Just ask the Lord right now, Father, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Make me anew. Show me what you have in store for me and just wrap your arms around me. I'm sorry for the things that I have done and I commit my life anew and afresh to you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just praise him and thank him. There's not a certain way we have to do this. Just be yourself one-on-one. -on -one. Talk to him like you would do a person, a, a, a person that, that you're standing in front of or whatever. So tonight I just want to say thank you, Prophet Minerud, for this opportunity. And I hope I didn't go too long or maybe too short. <laughs> Amen.